If I could only learn one chord, it would be this one. You might be thinking, it sounds like there's more going on here than just one chord. Indeed. Let me show you how everything you're hearing is coming from one simple, but useful and atmospheric chord, the minor 11th chord. We are in the key of A minor, which is an easy key to visualize because it's just the white keys of the keyboard or piano. Think of this as the scale in its horizontal form, planking if you will. Now let's think of the scale in numbers. Now when we get back to the beginning, you might think that we call this 8, but when we're thinking of the scale horizontally, we just start back over again with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then start over at 1 for every octave. Enough scales. Now we get to the slick chord stuff. Let's play a simple game of leapfrog. Start with the first note, A, then skip the second note, and then activate the third note. Repeat this pattern. Now it takes us two full octaves of the scale to get back where we started with the note A. This is the scale in its vertical form. Since it takes two octaves to complete the scale and get back to A, it'll be useful to count the notes differently. A is one, C is three, E is five, G is seven, and this is the same as we saw before. Here's where it's different. When we think vertically in this game of leapfrog, A, an octave above, becomes eight, which makes B, you guessed it, nine instead of two, although nine and two are the same note. D is 11, F is 13, and then when we get back to A, we start over calling this one. Scales and chords are two different forms of the same thing. Scales are horizontal, and chords are vertical. To turn these into actual chords, we need them playing at the same time, in a truly vertical form. Here we have all the notes of the scale stacked in our game of leapfrog. This is the same as taking all the notes of the scale and stacking them right next to one another. Although these two chords sound different, the name of the chord is the same, A minor 13, because it includes all of the notes stacked up to the 13th, which is all seven notes of the scale. Okay, the minor 13th chord is cool, but can often have too much going on for most musical situations, and it's not the useful atmospheric one from the beginning of this video. We want A minor 11, which is, you guessed it, every note up to the 11th. This chord is useful in all kinds of harmonically focused music. When we move the notes of the chord to different octaves, the chord name stays the same. These different distributions and positions of notes are called chord voicings. I'm going to show you a few of my favorite minor 11th voicings. Move 1, which is the note A, to a lower octave. Move the 11th, which is D, down one octave to get a nice little cluster of notes. Now bring the ninth, which is B, down one octave, and we get four notes right next to one another, which creates a nice watery texture. When creating different chord voicings, you can also repeat notes in different octaves without changing the name or type of chord. I'm going to double the ninth so that it's in its original position and also one octave lower. Now let's add some rhythm. Here's a drum and bass style pattern. I'm going to sync the chord with the first two kick hits. I'll repeat the chord one more time on the fourth kick drum hit. Here's where you can combine the vertical and horizontal approach into one. 
I want to connect the first and second chords, which are vertical, by using the scale horizontally. I'll jump up from the 9th to the 11th, and then move horizontally back down to the 9th through the 3rd. Let's add more horizontal motion at the end of the loop. We'll move down to A, jump up to C, where it then falls back down to B at the start of the loop. This could get repetitive pretty quickly, so we'll spread it out over two bars. Now I'll add echo, auto filter, and side chain the chords to the kick to get some more interaction between the tracks. The synth bass will play the rhythm of the kick drum and play the note of the one of the chord, A. This creates a simple bass line, but really the bass is just playing the rhythmic information of the drums and the harmonic information of the chords. Let's give it some individuality by adding some notes at the end of the loop. Lastly, copy the horizontal melody from the chords to a synth track to get it to stand out in the mix a little more. There you have it, a simple idea coming entirely from an A minor 11th voicing. I hope this has shed some light on how you can think vertically and horizontally to tie the different tracks in your song together in a very clear way. If you'd like to download this project file, you can do so on my Patreon. And if you're interested in a one-on-one -on -one session, email me at jarenlessons at gmail.com to set up a session. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.